The mission at the Foster Chapel Baptist Church is to impact the lives of our community through a gospel-centered ministry and nurture spiritual growth through efficient, Bible-centered Christian education. Learn more today. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, give us some praise. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. We're going to begin with our praise and worship. We ask that you join in with the youth choir as we lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, put your hands together.
Amen. Praise the Lord again, church. Amen. We're going to enter into our devotion. Join in with us this morning. Please stand for scripture and prayer. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, for whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for giving us another chance to be in your presence. We thank you for being in this house that you've built just for us to praise you and glorify your name. We thank you for getting us this far in our lives and thank you for just not giving up on us when things got tough. We thank you for being that hope, that beacon of light that all of us in our lives need. Now we just hope and pray that we can just honor you today and every day now on. In Jesus Christ's name we do pray, amen. All over the building. All the glory of your presence, of your presence, we your temple. Give you reverence, give you reverence, so arise, so Let's say that one more time. So arise, so arise to your rest and be blessed by our bread as we glory in your embrace as your presence as your presence now feels this place 
Come on, give God some praise. You may be seated. Lately. Come on, put your hands together, church. I need some more. I can't explain it. Jesus, your love. It gets me high. makes me want to stomp. Make me clap my hands. My brother, can't you see? Come on, church. I need you to put your hands together for us. Lately. I need some help now. I just can't explain it. With Jesus, your love. It gives me what? And when I think about his goodness, Just makes me want to clap my hands. My brother, can't you see? All right, I need y'all to put your hands together for this part. FC, are you with me? 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 All my folks say, all my people say, all my brothers say, all my sisters say, everybody say, everybody say. FC, are you with me? FC, are you with me? FC, are you with me? All my people say, all my folks say, all my brothers say, all my sisters say, let the church say, everybody say, 
Everybody say. It ain't over. It ain't over. Let the people say. Let the folks say. Everybody say. Everybody say. Let the church say. From 10 a.m. until all food has been distributed. April is National Financial Literacy Month, and Foundation 101 is partnering with Connect Ministries to sponsor a $500 financial literacy contest for active participants. Two winners will win a $500 savings account in the form of a certificate of deposit. Participants are encouraged to read the book, I Got Bank, and submit an essay or an art project that explains what they learned from the book. But let's pause for a moment. Hey parents, have you ever said these words? If I knew then what I know now, I would be better off I would be in a different place. I would be set for life. And of course, the list goes on. If you've ever said these words, you know the value of this lesson. You and your adolescent male are encouraged to visit the Foundation 101 website at www.foundation101knox.com for complete contest details and to download the book, I Got Bank. Hurry up, contest submissions are due April 30th. Not done yet. On Saturday, April 27th, from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., Foundation 101 is teaming up with Sleep in Heavenly Peace to build beds for kids that don't have one. This project teaches our males how to serve others while learning things like teamwork, leadership, generosity, self-worth, and empathy. If you haven't signed up already, please visit the Foundation 101 website at www.foundation101knox.com to register. We are holding a Sunday School Teacher Workshop on Monday, April 29th from 6 to 8 p.m. Dinner will be provided at 5.30 p.m. with the workshop beginning promptly at 6. All current Sunday school teachers, as well as anyone who would like to be considered for teaching Sunday school, are expected to attend this workshop. Teachers who attended the retreat in November do not have to attend, but are more than welcome. Please call the church office to register so that we can get an accurate count for dinner. Any current teachers who are unable to attend, please contact the Christian Ed Director, Beverly Hamilton, at 804-892-0826 to discuss the makeup day. Thank you. We are excited to host Family Vacation Bible School from July 22nd through the 26th, with a kickoff on Sunday, July 21st. Our theme this year is From Vision to Reality, Winning God's Way. If you're interested in volunteering, please contact Shamika McRoy at McRoyFamily at gmail.com or call the church's office. The FCBC Bible Quiz Ministry recently competed in its last tournament of the season. We had a successful year bringing home 25 team and individual medals. 
all of our returning quizzers from last season improved their quiz averages. We came in second and third in both divisions for Team of the Year. We want to congratulate our teams, faith mates, and students of the Word for all of their hard work. We also want to thank our church family for their support and prayers. Next season, we'll be quizzing on the Book of Luke. Stay tuned for more information if you would like to join the quiz ministry or be a volunteer in the ministry. But for right now, quizzers and coaches, take a well-deserved rest. That's it for your morning announcements. Until next time, be safe, be blessed, be encouraged. Let's church say amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. amen. What an amazing God we have the, the privilege to worship. Like we were sharing this morning that if we didn't get it right on yesterday, God has given us another opportunity to get it right today. And I don't know about you, but I am so grateful and thank God for that opportunity. Uh, I got a little information here. Um, empowering voters and defending democracy voter registration workshop. Come and learn how to register voters online and in person. Help voters change their addresses if they are new in the area and answer, answer important questions about voting in Tennessee. When? Sunday, April the 14th. Uh, what time? 2.30 to 4 p.m. Location, City of Knoxville Public Works Building, 3131 Morris Avenue, Knoxville, Tennessee. Sponsored by nonpartisan organizations, NCBW Greater Knoxville Chapter, Lead of Women Voters of Knoxville, Knox County. All materials are supplied. You must register to attend, to register, email, or text the following information to Margaret Massey Cox, LWV KKC Voters Registration Coordinator. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this information, I'm going to put it in this hallway over here so uh, you will have all the information and so that we can make sure that we um, get ourselves in a position that we are able to vote. Uh, and so we're going to put this over in the hallway over on the side. Amen? Amen. Um, as we get ready for tithes and offering, I, I would like to read for you this, this, this verse out of Luke 6.38. And this is what it says. It says, give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. We want to thank God for his word. And uh, we're going to ask the ushers and the deacon, if they would, please come.
May we pray. Gracious Father, we want to thank you so very much for making it possible, Father, that we are able to give back to you a portion of what you have given to us. Because you made the first move in giving to us, it enabled us to be able to give back to you. Father, we want to thank all of those who gave, those who had a desire to give, but for some reason didn't have. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your hand is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me out right now. Lost 
lost a battle. You never lost a battle. You never lost a battle. You never will. You never lost a battle. You never lost a battle. You never lost a battle. You never will. If y'all enjoyed our young people, give them a hand. Man. Man. We have to keep them encouraged. And so when they are doing those things which is positive, we need to let them know that we are with them and behind them, pushing them on. Thank y'all so very much for a job well done. Amen. 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 Because they reminded us that God has never lost a battle. Amen. 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 And I thank them so very much for reminding us of that. We're going to have a little talk today. Uh, it will be found out of 2 Chronicles, I mean, 2 Corinthians, excuse me. 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. And uh, we're going to start reading at the sixth verse. 2 Corinthians 9. To have y'all get up in honor of the word, so you know it'll keep you keep you young. Amen. That is Second um, Corinthians, chapter nine, beginning at the sixth verse. Amen. This is what it says. But this I say: He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower 
and bread for food. Supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. While you are enriched in everything for all liberty, which causes thanks, giving through us to God, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. We just want to talk from this thought, give. Amen. I had the privilege of um, having some work done at the house. And while I was having the work done at the house, it was a gentleman there that was getting the job done for me. And while we were standing in the backyard, after he knew <laughs> that I was, I guess, he knew I was a Christian, we, we just started talking. And, uh, and so as we was talking, he asked me a question. He asked me a question as it related to what I felt and thought about tithes, offering, and giving to the church. And so as we began to dialogue this thought, I shifted his statement by saying this. I said to him, we will never understand giving until we first come to grips that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We have to come to an understanding that what you have is really not yours. It's not. (laughs) You, you, You think it is. You claim it as it is. But if you really sit down and put thought to it like I did in my recliner, you will come to grips that what you have is simply on loan to you. You can't take it with you when God called you home and you didn't bring it with you when the doctor hit you on your little bottle. And so what you have, what you are enjoying is the love of God that he have allowed you to share in and to enjoy while you are here on this earth. And I I, I told me him was talking and I said, so until we come to grips that what we have is not ours, we'll become better givers. Now, now it kind of like we were just, just talking and, and while we was talking, we, we, we had a great time. We had a wonderful time just sharing with each other. And so, so as we go forward, we have to be mindful of the fact that what we give to God is what God actually have already given to us. Now, let me, let me say it this way, hoping that I want you to really get this. The only reason that you can give to God is because God gave to you first. That's a fact. That's a fact. Let me explain it through our breathing process. We are able to exhale because God made the first move and allowed you to inhale. Because without inhaling, there will be no exhaling. And so if God didn't make the first move in giving you what you have, you will be unable to give back to him. And so God knows what you have because he gave it to you. And so when he asks for it back, we shouldn't have no issues 
as it relates to giving it back. Now, now, the reason I want to talk about this is because I really want to help us. Because I have observed, not in all instances, but in most, the people who struggles with putting and connecting the dots in life are usually non-givers. I want you to think about that. I don't know about you. I have them in my family. They never called me and said, Joe, I'm going to send you this or that. But every time they call me, they want me to do the sending. And so what it causes me to do is sometimes I'm a little slow to answer. <laughs> I am, you know, because I've, I've shared with them what I'm sharing with you. And that is if we can come to the place that we can give back to him what he already has given to us. Let me say it like this. You're not giving to God what you own. You're giving to God what he's on, what he owns. And so, and so with that thought, this is where we are today, is that I want to share with us the story here in this Bible is giving us the, the means and the ways of giving. Now, it is clear here that God expects us to give. It's clear in this text. It's clear. It's clear. It's clear. But the question is, what type of giver are you? That's, that's, that's the question. It's, it's not the fact that are you a giver? You're a giver. You're a giver. But the challenge in the text is, what type of giver are you? That's the question. Now, that sixth verse says, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Now, this gives you the picture, the thought of a farmer. This, 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 is, this is what it's sharing with us. It's, it's a farmer and how he go about doing his business, how, how he will go out into the field and he will sow seeds and, and, and he can, he can kind of plan for a harvest against how he sowed in the field. If he sowed half the field, when he come for the harvest, he shouldn't expect a, a, a total harvest from a full field because he, he, just, he just sowed a half a field. And so it's dependent on how you give as it re relates to your harvest. Now, I want us to go down to the 10th verse because we, we need to bring some connected dots here. Now, the 10th verse says it like this. Now, may he who supplies seeds to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Did y'all see it? Amen. Now, may he who supplies, y'all with me? Now, what, what that is saying to us is that we have a God that supply us with the seeds. You are not sowing seeds that you come up with. You are sowing seeds that God has given to you to sow. So why would we in our sowing that if God is the one who gives us the seed to sow, why would we sow them sparingly? Now, look what it said. It says, he who supplies seed to the sower, that's us, and bread for food, yeah. watch this, supply and multiply the seed that you have sown. 
God controls your harvest. Y'all see it? He says, God have the ability to not only supply you with the seed, but he can multiply. So if God is a multiplying God, why are you treating him like he's about to run out of seed? You don't have to uh, do inventory with the seed. Let me, let me say it like this. We are saying to God, thank you for all the seeds you give me, but I'm only going to sow a portion of it because I need to keep some seed back. Now, why would you keep seed back when you don't eat the seed? You eat the harvest. And so if you don't eat seed, why keep seed when you can put seed in the ground so that God can multiply it? And so if we go through life, if we go through life, being stingy with the giver. The giver will be stingy to you. Did y'all hear that? If you're stingy with him, he'll be stingy. Let me prove my point. Go to Luke 6, 38. Y'all ask so many good questions. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I'm almost done. Luke 6, 38 says it like this. Look at the last part of Luke 6, 38. The last part, it says, For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Y'all see it? You be stingy with God? <laughs> let, me, let me do it. Let me show you a different way. You get a measuring cup, and you come to God, and you, you give it to him. God looks at you and says, can I use your measuring cup? And then he'll fill up his blessing and give you the same measure that you use to him. He measured back to you. And so, in other words, you can help with what God bless you with by how you sow. You a stingy sower, you will reap stingy things. But if you are bound to for sower, God will bless you bountifully. You, you, you see it. It's in your Bible, but no one took it out, you know. If, if, if you do right by God, God is going to do right. You can't be God's giving no matter how you try. When you give up on God, God is still giving to you over and over and over again. He's constantly giving to you. And so he says, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. You sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. But then in the seventh verse, he says it like this. So let each one give as he purposed in his heart. Now, what he's saying to us here in this text, what Paul is, is writing here, he is sharing with us this, is that it's a heart thing. If your heart is off, your giving is off. Y'all see it? If, if it's about how you believe in God, do you trust God with your life or you trust yourself with your life? A person who is selfish and stingy in their giving and their sowing is saying to us, God, I can't trust you with it. Let me do how I feel what I need to do. Look what it says. He says, let each one give as he purposed in his heart. But then he goes on to say, not grudgingly. What God is saying here is that he don't want you to come to him, give to him with your mouth poked out. Y'all see it? He wants you to come to him because remember, remember, you're not giving your stuff to God, but you're giving to God his own stuff. 
just let's let's do it like this. Think back to when you loan someone something. And then when they bring it back to you and give it back to you, you don't want them giving it to you grudgingly because if they come like they don't want to give you your own stuff, the next time I come back and ask you again for it, you're a little slower to give it to them. Let's be real in here today. So, so he says, give, but don't do it grudgingly. Then he says, don't do it of necessity. What he's saying to us is that people who do it of, out of necessity is doing it because they are trying to avoid punishment. Let me help us. I'm just doing this because if I do it, God won't do nothing to me, you know. Like Malachi says, he won't curse me with a curse if I, if I do this. And so what he's saying to us, don't do it because of negative reasons. You do it because of positive reasons. And, and, and he is saying to us, don't, don't, don't do it of necessity, avoid avoiding punishment. Then he says, for God loves a cheerful giver. God is saying, I love those who are cheerful in their giving. You, when you are cheerful, you are saying to God, thank you for what you have given to me. You are the ultimate provider. Thank you for what you have loaned to me. I'm going to give back to you because you gave to me first. And so I want to be able now to give back to you. I thank you for what you have done. I know where my blessings come from. I know you own the, uh, a cattle on a thousand here. I know that the earth is yours, the fullness thereof. I know, as Haggai said, all the silver, all the gold belong to you. And so if everything belongs to you. I am excited. I am happy that you thought enough of little me to give back to big you. Look what it says. God loves a cheerful giver. He don't want, he don't love a grudging giver. He don't love those who come out of necessity and give. But he loves those who are cheerful in their giving. But then the eighth verse says it like this. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Eight verse simply says this, you won't like anything. You see it. You, it, you will be abundantly blessed for every good work. Everything that's good that you put your hands to do, God has already blessed, blessed you abundantly. And then the Bible says that he'll, that he'll give you grace. And grace is unearned favor. And I don't know about you, I'd rather take earn, earn favor to any department store because if I go in there with that unearned favor, I get things that I don't even have to pay for because he's already paid for it for me by giving me his grace. And so, and so, and so, it, it is saying to us that if we, if, we, if we give right, he will bless you right. Now, look, it says, he has dispersed abroad he has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplied the seed to the sower. I thank you for that, God. Because without God, there'll be no seed. I don't know if y'all know it, but we cannot manufacture seeds. There's something that God gave us at creation. And we've just been reusing it and reusing it and reusing them all down through the centuries. Because you can't make seed. God has blessed us with seed, 
and he continued to give us seed. And so the only way, uh, uh, we need, what we need to do is just simply thank him for what he has done for us. He have, he have given to us. And not only would he give to us, but he will multiply. He will multiply and increase the fruits of your righteousness. God does that. It's not about how good you are. Because when you sow the seed, it takes God to give water and sunshine. And God would do that for you if only you would sow abundantly and do it without grudging, do it without necessity, and do it with a good heart. But then what I like is that latter part of that 11th verse. This is where God get, get the glory. It says in that last sentence, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Y'all see it? It causes thanksgiving through us to God. When you are a giver and you bless others, they in turn thank God for what you have done. Y'all see the picture. Maybe they won't ever thank God. But when you give, you open up a door for that person to thank God for you being able to give to them in a way that is not grudging, that is not of necessity, and not of a bad heart. And so once we give to him, not grudgingly, other people thank God for us. God gets the glory. And so what I'm sharing with you today, if you want a larger harvest, if you want your fruit multiplied, sow it in that manner. Stop being selfish with your fellow brethren and sister, but be a giver. Give them kind words. Give them encouragement. Tell them that there is a God and he wants to be Lord in your life. Tell them that if you allow him to be Lord of your life, that he will walk with you. He will talk with you. He will share with you. He would be your own if you give your life to him. You can't sow a better seed than the word. And you tell them that God died, gave his son to die on Calvary Cross. He died for you to have a right to eternal life. He died for you. He bled there on Calvary third day. That he got up out of the grave with all power in his hand. Tell them that if you want to live victorious, give your heart to him. And if you do that, he will do something for you that you can never do for yourself. I was telling them at 8 o'clock, and I'm done, because I want us to remember, as you bless others, others bless God for you. And so what I want to share with you, I heard this story, I was telling this morning, of this young kid. He was at church, and after church, every Sunday, the pastor would have this bag of candy, and he would give it to the kids. But this one young man came up, and the pastor told him to go ahead and get the candy he wanted. And this young boy says to him, no. His mother was embarrassed because he said no to the pastor in front of her. So she, she, she said to him, go ahead and do what he tell you to do. He said, no, mom. I want him to give it to me. And so, and so as he said no and no and no, as, as the pastor finally reaches in and give him the candy out the bag. He get outside, his mom says to him, son, why did you do that? You embarrassed me in there. His reply was, his hands are larger than mine. <laughs> and, so, and so the thing is, 
when you give to God, God's hand is larger than yours. He can give to you far more than you can ever give him. You can give him everything and it still won't be enough because his hands is larger than yours. You can hold maybe my hand in your hand, but his hand holds the world. And if his hand can hold the world, he can show bless me abundantly with everything that I have. I thank God for every blessing. I thank God for every miracle. I thank God for every healing. I thank God for every miracle. I thank God for his grace, his mercy, his salvation. His hands is bigger. It's bigger than my hands. And so don't, don't give grudgingly. Don't give out of necessity. Give with a cheerful heart. Tell God you have blessed me. And now I want to bless you back. He will be so overjoyed that he will multiply everything that you have sown. And you think that you were going to get a harvest? Oh, your harvest will be far greater than what you can ever sow on your own. He'll send you rain. He'll send you sunshine. He'll give you everything. Your harvest will be so plentiful that, that there will not be enough for you to go out and get and receive it. So give to him, give to God, and then the people that you bless will give praise to him for what you have done on his behalf. Door to church is open. Don't give sparingly. Give bountifully. Don't give grudgingly. Give cheerfully. Don't give out of necessity. Give with a cheerful heart. God want to bless us. God want to bless you. If you give to him, he'll give to you for greater and for more multiplied than you can ever give him. And so I want to say this to you. He has given his son to die on the cross for you to give you an opportunity that you can come to Christ. And so I want to share with you this day, if you come by Letter Christian Experience Water Baptism, this is the day that the Lord has made. Use this day for him. Come to him. Give him your life and ask him to be Lord in your life. You can never make a decision as great and as grand as this because this gift truly is a gift that keep giving. I offer to you this day Jesus Christ, God's Son. You can come.
God bless you. God bless you. Last year was rough. That's all I can start with. Last year was rough. We've had a lot of deaths in the family. The last two recently has really hurt me and it brought me down a lot. But as God being great as he is, even though with their deaths, my grades had dropped really bad. They had went from A's, B's and C's to all F's. But me getting myself back together, I have made them all the way up back to A's, B's, and C's. thing is the God is God is great he really is these are young people amen recognizing how great God is He'll bless you in all your endeavors. If you want good grades, young people, don't study sparingly. Study bountifully. <laughs> and when you study like that, it will reflect your grades. Don't do it grudgingly, but do it cheerfully. And God will open up that mind. That's the first computer ever hit this earth. And so, study, study, study. Think about it. Most of you don't have no car payment. Don't pay KUB. You don't, don't have no house notes. All you, your job is go to school. Man, y'all ought to be knocking it out the park. <laughs> but I've been where you are. <laughs> and I understand there are so many distractions in this world. But remember, give to God your whole heart your whole mind and God will bless you tremendously. Do that and watch God do something amazing for you. You see, she just testified today, her grades come right back up. Amen. Amen. Y'all honestly are smarter than what you really know you are. <clears throat> Y'all smarter than your parents? I got one up here patting himself on the chest. <laughs> oh, Lord. And so, if you're smarter than your parents, here I come. Here come the curve. Let your grades reflect that. Let your grades reflect that. We're proud of you. Keep up the good work. Study bountifully and not sparingly. Amen? Amen. Let's go home. Say.
Let's sing that again bountifully. That was sparingly. Let's do it bountifully. Let the church. Gracious Father, I want to thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for challenging us to be better givers in life. To not do it sparingly, but do it bountifully. Do it with a heart that reflects you. Do it not grudgingly, not doing it of necessity, but doing it because we understand that you are the first giver and we are just a reflection of who you are. Father, we love you, we adore you, and we thank you for every good and perfect gift that comes from you. There is no one that loves us the way that you do. We thank you now. We bless your name. We ask this prayer in Jesus' name. May the grace of God, sweet communion, Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each of us henceforth and forever. Let us all sing together. Have a blessed week. Have a blessed week.